بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Anyone who is fortunate to obey Allah Jalla Jalalu Amma Nawaluhu in this temporary abode should be grateful to Allah Jalla Jalalu for giving him tawfiq. Every action, no matter how small it is, is appreciated by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Likewise, every action should be a lesson to us for our akhirat. If Allah has given anybody tawfiq to fast, thus fasting is not just a fast from eating and drinking and relationship with one's spouse. Fasting is a lesson to abstain from sin, disobedience, ma'asiyat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ad-dunya yawmun wa lana sawmun. The life of this world is one day and we need to be fasting for this day. The person who fasted on this day can have iftar, can have the ecstasy and the pleasure of enjoying an iftar. Those that don't fast don't have an iftar. If we live our life like a first fasting person, then a person's death can be an iftar. Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal rahimahullah used to say, Wail in likulli jamma'i saghirun fahu. Destruction be upon that person who gathers, who accumulates wealth, whose focus is only accumulating the assets of this world and he has no focus of the assets of the year after. His mouth is wide open, gaping, waiting and thriving on the opportunity. When will more dunya come? Kannahu majnoon. His appearance and actions are such like he's a mad person. Yarama in the nas. He looks and he thrives what other people have. Wala yarama in dahu. But he does not appreciate what Allah has favored him. Yarama in the nas. That is what Instagram, Facebook promotes. That firstly, you look at what everybody else has and what everybody else is doing. Your life is motivated by the actions and possessions of others. What a deception. All the whole of Bollywood and Hollywood is about that. Promoting the best cars, best houses, best relationship, best of dunya. Promoting always dunya. Second deception is a person inherently starts having this phobia of promoting themselves and their possessions. Thirdly, we become ungrateful of the bounties of Allah. If this person had the chance, he would have combined night and day so that his entire night would have become a day. And if he had the chance to work 24-7, 365 days of the year, he would have done it. Imam Sahib said, beware, be careful, be weary. For him is Hisab Ghalid, a very severe reckoning, a very severe interrogation. وَعَذَابْ شديد And a severe punishment. So time will reveal the deception we are in. On the day of Ashura we are told to spend. Is my motivation for spending because I will get barakah and blessings in my worldly things? Or is my motivation because it is the command of my Nabi? Am I motivated by other fadail or only fadail and virtues of dunya? When Imam Sab makes dua, Allahumma khfilli, Allahumma ansur, then a person silently might not even hear the Ameen. But when the dua comes that Allah put barakat in dunya, then even the sleeping people, Ameen, could be heard. So we need to come out of this deception. 
and ponder and think, am I caught in the strap or not? Well, am I explain if a person just thinks about his name, it's sufficient for his guidance. Somebody's name is Abdullah, somebody's name is Abdul Rahman. You are the servant of Allah, you are the servant of Rahman, but you've become the servant of Shaitan. Abdul Razak, you are the servant of Razak, the one who gives risk. Have I become the servant of risk? The names of Sahaba, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Talha, Zubair. What sacrifices Sahaba gave for the deen of Allah? What compromises am I making for the deen of Allah? Names of Anbiya, Yunus, Ismail, Ibrahim. What stone did they not leave unturned to make sure that the deen of Allah came alive on earth? And what stone do we leave unturned to make sure that we procure dunya as much as we can? Sara, Hajar, Aisha, Hafsa, Fatima, Sumayya, radiallahu anhum. She was the first Shaheed of Islam. The women of the Ummah were leaders in Deen. She sacrificed her life to see the Deen of Allah is protected. The women of this Ummah are sacrificing their lives. They are sacrificing the commands of Allah. The commands of Allah have been made Shaheed. The same Fatima, the same Sumayya of this Ummah. How dare you put that on your profile and you have the resume, you promoting everything other than Islam, everything other than Deen. Are you not shy of Allah? Are you not shy that you've got the name of these great exemplaries and yet on your profile you've attached portfolios of whom Allah and His Rasul have cursed? Khadija, what sacrifice? And Allah make us maaf, we've gone a step further. We are looking for names that are more colorful and rosy and fancy that are close to the names of the enemies of Allah and His Rasul. So we're asking Mufti Sahib, Mufti Sahib will tell you it is permissible. Istafti qalbak. At least your parents gave you a name of those people who had accolades and you want to give your children the name of people who will ignite and further the flame of Jahannam. So we need to take life seriously, take Akhirat seriously. Safwan bin Amr used to say, Ya ma'ashara ahli al-amwal, O the people of dunya, barridu ala juludikum min amwalikum. Use your wealth to extinguish the fire of Jahannam. Use your wealth to extinguish the adab of this world. Allah is a day will come and we'll look at each other wondering what happened. Where did I go wrong? I fear the subtle desires. When you start fulfilling your ambitions, in bounties that will make you negligent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will forget Allah because of those bounties and that will be the day and that will be the day you will satiate yourself from having these luxury meals, these luxuries of this world. You will satisfy yourself from luxuries but you will starve knowledge, you will starve the people of deen, you will starve your soul, you will deprive yourself 
of the bounties of dunya and akhirat by fulfilling your desires and ambitions. So dunya outwardly, externally looks lush and plush and green, but it's the world of deception. The day, the day you get dunya, it loses value. And the longer time goes, the more it loses its value. A couple reached, just newly married, reached their destination. Bride was embarrassed. She asked her husband, is there any way that you can make me look like we've been married for a long time? Can you find a solution? So we look like we married a long time. She was very embarrassed. So the husband said, sure, no problem, very easy. When we get out of the car, I need you to carry all the bags. So dunya, you cannot trust anybody. It starts with trust and it ends with betrayal. Our trust needs to be in Allah Rabbul Alameen. Even in the worldly terms, people we trust cannot be trusted. Because the worldly knowledge is temporary. Allah's knowledge is eternal. See, a man woke up in hospital and he had his leg amputated. So the doctor came to him and said, I've got some good news and bad news. This person was shocked and baffled that I needed good news. This is not a time, doc, to give me bad news. But might as well give me the bad news. So the doctor says, I'm afraid we've amputated the wrong leg. I'm afraid we've amputated the wrong leg. So he screamed and shrieked, the wrong leg? How could you do that to me? Anyway, I cannot do anything about it. What's the good news? So the doctor said, with relief, after going over the test results of your first leg, I think, I think we can able, it's possible to save the leg. I think so. There's a possibility we can save your leg. That's dunya. Both ways you lose out. Both ways you lose out. So we need to make big ambitions, have high hopes, the lives of Umbia and Saba in front of us, and make them our target and destination. We haven't even made a niyat yet. We haven't even made a niyat yet. You see, there was a person who drove into a ditch in a country side road. There was a farmer there with his horse. So he ran to him and said, could you get your horse to pull my, your, my car out of the ditch? So the uh, farmer said, sure, no problem. My horse can do it. So he hitched the horse uh, onto the car and he said, the horse's name was Buddy. So he said, Blacky, pull, pull. But the horse didn't move a centimeter. Again, he said, Whitey, pull, pull. Didn't move a centimeter. Then he said, Happy, pull, pull. And he didn't move a centimeter. On the fourth time, he said, Buddy, pull, pull. And Buddy, without any effort, pulled the car out of the ditch. So the driver was shocked and baffled, but also grateful that his job, his work got done. So he said, tell me, you keep calling your horse wrong name. Why are you calling the wrong names? Rather call it the correct name at the first instance. So the farmer said, you don't have a clue. Buddy is blind. Buddy is blind. If he thought he was only the one pulling, he wouldn't even tried. If he knew he was the only one pulling, he wouldn't even have tried. We need to have this vision. The deen of Allah and the responsibility to see it coming alive in the world is my responsibility. Everybody out there is helping me. Then we will not find flaws, we will not attack, and we will not be so lax, but we will take this responsibility. Allah has given us the opportunity. Let us utilize all these avenues to see that Allah accepts us for His deen. Allah has granted us Akhirat. Allah has granted us Jannah beyond comprehension. Such a Jannah we cannot imagine. It will get better and better and better. See a person was driving uh, along a country roadside again, his car broke down. 
He went out, he opened the bonnet, he checked inside the engine, he was trying to find a solution. When a horse passed him, looked into the engine and said, you better check the fuel pump. You better check the fuel pump and left. So this person was shaken, was trembling, he just wondered what happened. He ran for solace to the nearest farmhouse and he told the farmer what happened. So the farmer said, was it an old white horse with a black patch? So he said, yes, yes, the same one. So the farmer said, don't give any attention to him. He doesn't know the first thing about cars. He doesn't know the first thing about cars. So when he also does something amazing, there was something even more amazing. Jannah will be like that. Just when we thought we've seen it all, something better will come. And just when we think we've done it all, something better will come. Dunya, you've done it, you've done it. That brand new car that you bought today is old tomorrow. Dunya gets old quickly. Jannah renews eternally. So let us focus our attention on this Jannah. When a person gets good news also, he can faint, fall unconscious. When he gets bad news, he can faint, fall unconscious. Jannah will be such. The pleasures will continue and continue. Then an old man woke up from a recovery room in an operation and he said, all oh, thanks, the operation is over and he's been successful. So he was happy voicing his opinion and the person next door screamed and said, hey, you're very fortunate. They had to cut me up. They left a scalpel inside me. So he said, how terrible. Then the next door neighbor said, they left the surgical glove inside of me and cut, had to cut me up. So the old man, Bichara, said, that's very bad, that's dreadful, how could they do that to you? As he just said that, the surgeon who operated on him stuck his head round the corner from the passageway and screamed out, has anybody seen my hat? Has anybody seen my hat? He said, the old man fainted. So Jannat won't be like that. Jannat is a place where we will eternally enjoy the bounties and pleasures. So dunya externally is beautified, embellished. We should not get caught by this external deception. They said there was one person was hospitalized and the family seen the situation was drastic. So they called the sheikh. So the sheikh came, he stood at the bedside and the person's condition seemed to deteriorate and get worse. And then he shaked and made signs and in a frantic he made a sign of wanting to write something. Meanwhile the uh, family pressed the panic button and Sheikh gave him a pen and paper to write so he scribbled a note. As he scribbled a note he finished the message. The doctors came and tried to revive him but he passed away. So seeing the situation the Sheikh said let's leave it for a while. So after an hour he addressed the family saying, you know, it was an appropriate time, but now is a good time to see what the marhum, the disease, what message is left for us. So he opened a piece of paper and he read it. Sheikh, you stand in on my oxygen tube. Sheikh, you stand in on my oxygen tube. So dunya, externally, it will have one story. But internally, probably our whole life also will never realize it. Let us turn our attention to Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, turn our attention to Akhirat, and turn in this Mubarak Ayyam to repentance, to draw in from the treasures of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and making an inia eternally to fast. An important amal in deen is to look after the orphans. In ahabbal buyuti Allah, baytun fihi yatimun mukramun. The most beloved houses in the eyes of Allah are those houses which house the orphans that are looked after well. Allah gives us an opportunity in our houses, very good. If not, let us find those places where orphans are housed and make sure we have a share in that. خَيْرُ بَيْتٍ فِي الْمُسْلِمِينَ بَيْتٌ فِيهِ يَتِيمٌ يُحْسَنُ إِلَيْهِ The best houses of the believers are those houses where there is an orphan and is looked after. And the worst houses are the houses where there is an orphan, Yusa'u ilayhi, where harm is caused to that orphan. 
May Allah SWT give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.